Hi, I'm Jason, or Algamore. Uh, last year at DEF CON, my bag got destroyed yet again by the airline, so I was talking to a friend of mine. I said, you know, I ought to put a camera in a bag and see exactly what are these guys doing. Because you, know, you drop your bag off, it disappears. What happens? What do they do? Do they do anything besides destroy bags? <laughs> so who am I? Been IT for a while, done all types of development, I'm a private pilot. I'm an elite flyer, which is not really a good thing. I mean, it's kind of a good thing when you get the upgrades, but the pain and suffering you go through to get it kind of sucks. Um, that's mostly because my girlfriend lives in Alaska, so I do a lot of flights from Indianapolis, where I live, up to Alaska. Um, so you, you tend to rack up the miles by doing that. Um, am I an expert in aviation security? Not at all. But then again, if you watch the news, the experts, or so claimed experts, aren't experts either. Um, especially when you have things like a firearm going off in the flight deck a couple of weeks ago by a certified federal flight deck officer. <laughs> now, I'll explain this one. And not just going off in the flight deck, right? It goes off in the flight deck during landing. What was this guy doing up there? He's supposed to have a sterile cockpit, you know? Supposed to be all professional. Now, granted, I know they're commercial pilots, so they're not, not really professional. But still, I mean, how does a firearm go off up there while you're landing? So, I kind of briefly mentioned while I was starting why bag cam. I hate, absolutely despise security by facade. That's what most security is, in my opinion. That's definitely what airport security is. I could deal with the inconvenience of security if it actually made a difference, if it was making our flight safer. I don't think that it does. A lot of people don't think that it does. The government doesn't think that it does, at least the oversight, uh, OMB, GAO. Um, we'll get to that a little bit later. So again, I, I just find the entire experience of going through security annoying and was really dubious that it actually was making a difference. Were all of these things, the hoops that we're jumping through, does it really make it safer? Does taking my shoes off really mean that the plane isn't going to get blown up? I mean, the guy that had some explosives in his shoes couldn't even light it, so does it really make it safer? Again, I had another bag mutilated by the airlines, or TSA. They both point the finger at each other. Um, it, it wasn't really, this one wasn't really mutilated. They actually just broke a zipper. But it was a nice one with the, uh, you know, nice aviation quality aluminum zippers. I, I mean, if I had a pair of pliers, I'd be hard pressed to break the zipper in the way they broke it. So I don't know how they did it. It, it just astounds me that they broke it there. Tearing the bag open, sure, I can understand that one. But breaking a solid piece of aluminum like that, you have to go out of your way to do that. So again, I was curious, what's going on behind the scenes there? Are they actually doing something serious to inspect my bag, and that's why it's getting broken? What, what's going on back there? Is there anything going on back there? And I had one too many inspection notices. That's one of these guys. I don't know if you can read that back there. But that's basically a, we're sorry we inconvenienced you, but we're sure you understand we're making things safer for everybody. Sure, I, I understand. So at least this time, they didn't dump everything all over the place. And my bag was still reasonably, the contents at least, were still reasonably intact. Um, what is bag cam? Well, bag cam is right here. This is bag cam. Um, and we'll get to the details of the construction a little bit. But I just bought a cheap bag from Walmart. Um, thought about what are the easiest ways of getting a camera in here, recording things, being safe, not putting myself in a situation where if TSA sees this, they're going to freak out. Um, I was looking at various options. There are several what they call micro DVRs on the market out there. And I've got some close-up pictures of this one is the model that I went with. This is also another popular model that you'll find out there. Um, this particular one is made by a company called Swan. You'll find them at Fry's, probably Best Buy, a lot of places like that. Uh, and I'm not really endorsing them. I think overall their products are crap. But they're easy to get a hold of, so that played a key factor. Um, this guy that I ended up using has 128 meg of onboard memory. 
You can also put USB. There's a thing called an RSMMC, which is sort of a bastardized SD card. Um, the recordings that I'm going to show you later were done at 128 by 128 15 frames per second. Um, this micro DVR is capable of doing 640 by, it's not really 480, but something like that. Um, but the frame rate really drops down and the time that you can record really drops. So I decided to go with lower quality because I didn't really care about the quality. I just wanted to see what was going on back there. Um, and there were some other issues with video quality. We'll get there in a little bit. Um, another key thing that I was looking for, I wanted to make sure that whatever I was using to record this was all solid state. I didn't want any moving parts in there. Um, I, I didn't want this to go through and have things moving and get x-rayed. I, I figured that would set off all types of red flags. I figured just having something in here with batteries and wires coming out of it was probably going to set off enough red flags, right? So I, I was trying to, to minimize any headaches from that. Um, again, originally I was planning on using a different little DVR, which was this guy. Um, this one has a built-in camera. This one does not. This one's a lot cheaper than this one is. Um, so I was all set to go with this, and basically 24 hours before the flight, it died on me. I was like, oh, oh, and that's why you should always buy two of everything and have redundancy and all those lessons that we all know, and kind of goes back to backing up your hard drive and those types of things that we all know we should do, but most of us probably don't. So the fact that it died is why I went with the one that I did. Uh, had that not been the case, there's pluses and minuses for both of these. Uh, so I just want to talk a little bit about built-in versus an external camera and a couple of other differences between these two options, which are, are probably, if you start looking online, the two most easily accessible options that you're going to find, they're both under $1,000. Um, you can find these for a couple hundred. You can find these for like four to $800, depending on where you look, what type of deals you get. Uh, the other options start off at a couple thousand and go up into the $10,000 range. Uh, so obviously I didn't want to go down that path. Um, an external camera gives you a lot of options that you don't have with built-in one as far as placement. Because you can put your DVR wherever you want in your bag. You can run a camera so you get what you think is going to be the best viewing angle or the best potential for a good view uh, when your bag is traveling or whatever you want to catch. Um, on the downside, now you've got another camera, so you have more complexity there. There's more things to go wrong. There's more things to set up. Uh, there's more things to manage, right? So it comes down to a complexity with a little bit of added flexibility versus some simplicity. The SwanGuard model, which is the black one here that I ended up using, it has a built-in rechargeable lithium-ion battery, which is a nice plus. Um, this is the battery, so it's kind of like a cell phone battery. And basically in the power savings mode, you can get 24 to 48 hours of recording time on this guy. Um, <laughs> I don't think so, because if they do that, then you wouldn't be able to take a cell phone on board a plane. So this is essentially a cell phone battery. <laughs> well, true, true. My point there is it's no more dangerous than the bombs that we all carry around in our pockets every day, right? It, it's kind of funny. A couple of days ago, I get home, and there's a UPS notice on my door, and I'm like, what the hell is this? I don't remember ordering something. It's possible I ordered something. I forgot about it. So I finally get around to picking it up yesterday, and my cell phone company sent me a new battery. Didn't even ask for it with some notice in there. It's very rare, but under rare circumstances, these batteries overheat. So we're just replacing all of them free of charge to everybody. It's like, okay. So, so yeah, they, they, uh, there are some issues with lithium-ion batteries. I don't think that they're going to outlaw them on planes. Um, I mean, it, it's worthy of discussion, but from a practical standpoint, I just don't see it happening. So, and, and by the way, feel free to jump in with any questions you guys have. Um, and again, the reason that I selected this one was, well, my first choice died the day before. So made the decision real easy. So there's a close-up picture of it for you. Um, the camera is this little dot right there. 
which you can't even really see if you're looking at it. The model also has a whole a little tiny one on the other side. Designed, this thing's designed for three cameras. This model only has one in it. I can't find any of them that have like the two or three cameras or have like the video output or any of the, the real goodies on them. Um, I'm starting to think they just never made it. I'm going to tear this thing apart soon, probably. I just haven't done it yet. So I'm, I'm wondering if you could just pop one in there. So it's tiny, as you can see. And the camera is pretty inconspicuous. And when this thing is recording, it looks just like that. There aren't any lights flashing or anything. There are at first, and then after like 30 seconds, it goes into this like power savings mode and stuff. So it looks just like that, even though it's sitting there recording everything. Um, so yeah, it's perfect for this. So you can pick it up. You know, TSA can look at it and like, oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not even know that they're on video. Unfortunately, I didn't get any video of that yet. <laughs> so, um, how did I make bad cam? Why is there an X-Acto knife? And what is this picture all about, right? Well, I bought a cheap bag from Walmart. I think I paid like $20, $30 for it. Need to cut a little hole in the side. Um, this, is this is essentially ballistic nylon, I think, or regular nylon. Anyway, if you cut into this, anybody that's worked with it knows you have to be careful because it'll start fraying out on you and things. Um, so what I did was I cut a hole in with my sharp X-Acto knife. I took a piece of plastic that had the same size hole in it, glued that in there. Um, so that provides some rigidity and also keeps it from fraying out. Um, one of the nice things about this DVR is it comes with this little container thing. It comes in two pieces. It's just this little black box. And you snap this thing together, and now it's just this little innocuous looking black, black brick. That's also nice because you can take the other side of this, and you just glue that to the side of the bag, snap it together, and it takes care of how you're going to mount it. So that was another benefit to going down this path. Uh, it, it was very easy. It probably took 15 minutes to get everything set up, and glued it together. Um, another picture of it. That's what this looks like when it's actually in its case. You can see the little camera poking out at you there. It actually doesn't look that obvious when you're looking at this in person. That's just because I took a close-up picture and there's a flash and so you can see the glass reflecting off of there. Um, so camera placement. Where do you put the camera in the bag? That was something I thought about for a while because you know this is obviously kind of a random event. You're trying to get lucky. Um, the worst thing that could happen is the bag flips over and you're just videoing like the side of the conveyor belt or the side of another bag and you get X hours of black footage. So that you don't want. So how do the airline employees handle bags? Well, if you watch, well, yeah, a couple of people laughed at that one. I guess we, we know part of that answer, don't we? If you watch them on a bag like this with the wheels, the roller board style bag, when you hand it to them, they'll almost always flip it over upside down like this. They do that because they want the wheels pointing up. So if it's down like this, it can roll around. So you're pretty much guaranteed it's going to get plopped down like this. So the obvious places are on the sides. That way you get a view looking out as you're going by as opposed to looking up the ceiling or you know, down at the conveyor belt. Um, this one has a, it's a little bit scuffed up, so it's a little bit easier to see right now. I opted to go right here above the name tag folder, because um, that allows me to hide anything down in here. Um, and it has an added advantage of these DVRs have motion sensing in them. So if I'm somewhere I don't want to record, I just pull the name tag up a little bit. So that way, I don't have to record like my drive to the airport and waste time on the DVR when I'm driving over there or incriminate myself if I'm going a little bit faster than I should have or something like that. Um, you want to try to be inconspicuous. At first I was concerned that that is so easy to see that hole in the side of it. Nobody's ever noticed it. Nobody has ever noticed it. Uh, I, I think it's another example of people don't see things unless they're looking for them. Um, I've had people pick it up. I've had people handle it. Uh, you know, I've been on the bus going from the airport over to the parking lot, and nobody has noticed it, even when they've been six inches away with it, like, staring right at their face. Is that, that's 
checked luggage versus carry-on. Correct, that's checked luggage, but I would be willing to bet you could take that through and they probably wouldn't notice it. Unless they pulled aside and they start pulling everything out to check it and they realize, why is this black box glued to the inside of your luggage? I bought it at Walmart. <laughs> I'll have to remember that answer. That, that might actually work for that. <laughs> as long as you haven't seen the presentation here. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a good answer as well. Uh, for those of you who couldn't hear it, the response was it's DRM. So I don't know if that applies for you know, federal TSA employees, though. They're probably exempt from everything. So this is a picture of the inside. Nice advantage of this. I don't know if you can see, but down the middle, the lining zips open. How convenient for me. So this is zipped open. You can see the inside of it. Um, kind of interesting little side note here. So I zip it open. I'm like, what, what is this over here in the corner? Lift it up. It's, it's like some plaid piece of fabric that they like patched something up in there. Like, like, okay, I guess this is why you don't dig into luggage that much. Yeah. Hey, it was like $20 Walmart. Walmart. I figured there was a 50-50 chance it was going to get seized on the first flight. So I'm thinking, this is probably a throwaway. I, I could care less. You know, if it lasts for a flight, I'm happy. Uh, here I've got a white card back behind it, just so you can see the hole. Um, it looks pretty big. It is pretty big. Nobody notices. Plus, it's got black behind it when the camera is actually in place. Again, you all know it's there, so if you look at the bag, you're, you're immediately going to see it. Most people aren't going to see it. Um, ah, some TSA facts. I was going to get to that a little bit later. So that's the construction of bag cam. Now, one of the other things that I liked originally about this guy was it said, oh, it can save stuff to AVI files. I'm like, great. Well, the problem is you have to use some Windows software in order to convert it, and it doesn't work. It doesn't work on a Windows machine, it doesn't work on a Mac, it, does, it, doesn't work. it just doesn't work. <laughs> so I was killing myself trying to figure out how do I convert the files, and the video quality is a little bit lacking just because it's shot at 128 by 128, but it's really lacking because I couldn't figure any way reasonably of getting the files off of there into a usable format, so I had to like put the DVR down, play it, and shoot it with a video camera. So, yeah, so, so, yeah, I mean, I kind of earned a schmoop off for that one. So it's kind of ghetto, but it does make it easy when the bag gets flipped around to just, like, rotate the camera like this, so it, it made some of the editing a little bit easier. Ghetto, ghetto is the word, though. I, again, I like to emphasize we're kind of focusing on the content of what happened and not the quality of the video. This isn't a presentation about video quality, right? I probably should put a slide in there about that, maybe. Um, so let's take a look at some of the video here. Y yes. <laughs> so, and I'm including all the information on the side just so you can see where it came from, plus just shooting with the video camera. Um, so how does that look back there? Can you guys tell that's a person or do I need to shrink it down a little bit? Yeah. So this is standing in line. I don't think we've got audio on it, but yeah, if we could. Right. So this is after the airline employee picks it up. They've thrown all the conveyor belt. At this point, yeah, yeah, it, 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 exactly. That's kind of what it feels like. I've got some footage going through O'Hare, and it's like 30 minutes of this. It's like, it's like, whoa. I'm sorry, what was that? Denver. Yes. Denver shut down their stuff years ago, so. right. Well, that's one of the things that has surprised me. I'm not going to bore you with like 10 hours of footage here, but you know, I'm thinking all this stuff is going to be automated, right? No, it's almost all manually done. Because I was curious, like, how do they do this in an automated fashion without just completely botching it? They don't. That's, that's the answer. Um, this blackness here, you can see we're kind of inching forward a little bit. That's actually where the bag's being x-rayed, and I got some footage later on where you can see from an external view some of the other ones. So this is Indianapolis Airport, 
And yeah, so we're going down through some of the conveyor stuff. Uh, let's so this gets a little bit boring here, but some of the audio was a little bit interesting here because you, you can find. Do we? Yeah. There we go. Okay. So that was a person picked it up off of the conveyor belt. That's my great editing software. They're rotating it around automatically for us. <laughs> so. Yes. So. Unfortunately, I haven't gotten any really good footage yet. Yet is the key word, because eventually I will. Well, that's going to be some good footage. Maybe I need, like, wireless. Whoa, I thought I clipped that out. So. Yes. So roughly, how big was your total file size at the end of the trip? Um, I'll go ahead and pause that. At the end of a trip, this has motion sensing on it. So I was really only in 128 by 128. I was generating probably about 20 meg for about four hours of video. So it, it's not that bad. Um, the video, I think it's just raw from the CCD. So what I want to do is open this guy up, see what CCD is in it and then try to just RE the, uh, the data streams coming back. It's not compressed. It shouldn't be that difficult. If anybody has any experience doing that, let me know. I know there's some people out there that have done that. I have not done that yet. So that'll be kind of an interesting experience. Um, so, right. So I mean, it's kind of like you're on a ride going through things here. Um, and we should take off again in just a minute. Um, you can see bags continue to go by on the conveyor belt up there. What happens if the bags get sent to these central locations? So it was just picked up. So you can see the, the person, I'm like trying to get their face so you can see them in there. You got a quick little glimpse. And all of this stuff shuffling around, it's getting tossed onto one of the baggage carts. I thought about that. That would be interesting. That, that's one of the things that I want to consider as a, a future enhancement for Bag Cam 2. Um, yeah, well, now, now we're actually in the luggage cart, I think. Yeah, I think we're just staring at the side of another bag there. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, okay, some of the stuff I thought I had clipped out, but apparently not. So this is riding along. We got dumped onto another conveyor belt. This is a separate flight. Yeah, this, this, is, this is the beginning of O'Hare's conveyor belt system here. And this just goes on and on and on for like an hour. It would be kind of fun, wouldn't it? So we, we ride along. We ride along. We tumble along. And it, it's... You know, amazing just how much they have buried underneath there. You know, I, I knew they had a lot buried underneath there, but it's it's one thing to know; it's another thing to actually see it. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's and this was not a hot day either. That's the funny thing. More fans, if you can see them in there. They actually are. It's just we're yeah we're shooting at like 15 frames a second. Yeah. So you, yeah. There you, there you go. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I think somebody grabbed it. I hope. My bag showed up at the end of the trip, so it it must have been intended, right? So now somebody's carrying it, and that's back to that same location. So let's uh. That's another thing that I've considered doing as well. You see this a lot so. of the video where what happened to my video? Yes, you'll, you'll see that. That particular flight was at O'Hare. It took two and a half hours for me to get through check-in and then like another hour or two to get through security. So I missed my flight, obviously. Um, so my bag got pulled and it actually ended up on the right flight, amazingly enough. That was Easter Sunday morning. Stupid me, I thought, oh, it's Easter Sunday, everybody's going to be there, right? 
No, it, it was just a mess. It, it's probably the only other time I've seen an airport that was that big of a mess was when Reagan National opened their terminal up several years ago. I flew through there the second day. They had a situation very similar to Denver. The um, automated baggage handling and the automated flight announcement information was completely whacked out. So there were announcements that flights were being delayed, and they weren't. So flights were leaving on time with nobody on board. And people were showing up the gate like an hour or two later, like we're here for a flight, and gate agents like, the flight left on time. Like, well, the announcement said it was delayed. I'm like, yeah, well, that's what the announcement said. <laughs> so <laughs> this is kind of interesting here. This is Chicago Hare. This is this Easter flight. This is when I dropped my bag off. You actually dropped your bag off in this like little holding area out in the middle of everybody. So it's not secured at all. It's just like a, oh, please don't molest the bags here. Right? So then it gets loaded on some little tram system thing and like drives it all over the place around the airport. Right. Right. So yeah, you can see people walking around and so this this is checked. Now, this luggage has not been screened yet. But still, I'm not real happy that my bag is just kind of like wandering about, right? I mean, anybody could just easily like, chunk. It's like a neurotic R2. It does, yeah. It, it really does. It's kind of a brain dead R2, I guess. It can see, but it can't really think or do anything about what it sees. So, so this goes on for like an hour or so before they finally get it. So now you can see we're back up where I checked in, right? It's like, could I just drop my bag off there? No. No, apparently that's not how the system was working that day. Exactly. So and I think in a couple of seconds here, we end up on the conveyor belt. Um, hopefully, if not, I'm going to forward through this and take us to the areas where things actually get loaded on the planes. So, yeah, there, there's, there, there, there's a nice... So that partially answers the question, how does that happen to our bags? Right there, that's one of them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we just got squashed right there. So. You know, I know a girl that actually works as a baggage handler, and these girls are in shape. I mean, you, you want to. Well, good point. So I think here, who knows what happened to us at this point. We're staring at the side of another bag. You know, yeah, it's most of the airport's a black hole. So. so here we go. We're, we, we made it onto like the chute. We're almost into the conveyor belt. Yeah, right. So. And this is just, you know, even more of the conveyor belt system at O'Hare. Um, what's that? Okay. <laughs> we have somebody up here who has worked there, apparently. So I guess that means I have to be accurate in what I tell you guys or I'm going to get caught. would like to do something like that. Somebody mentioned the stock, the shock stickers, which would be an easy way of, you know, figuring out how much shock I've, I've sustained. And with the camera, you're probably going to know where it happened, right? Um, because, again, I want to try to keep the electronics minimized. I want to try to minimize my footprint and the potential of upsetting anybody or potentially even breaking laws or what people think might be laws. What's that? That's the most interesting aspect of this. Right. <laughs> I think it is. Now, 
Right. Well, this is checked luggage, so you aren't physically present, so they have to track you down before they can shoot you. So, yeah. So. I guess I need to get my passport renewed, don't I? But. Right. Okay, I'm not a lawyer. All the standard disclaimers, insert them here, right? I don't think this is illegal. Yes. Right. Exactly. Yeah, you know, we aren't trying to catch people. We just want to see what's happened to our bag, track it. The device powers down. It's 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 bag jack, right. Bag jack, right. That's yeah, that's a good one. So what was that? Well, all you have to do is watch this presentation now, so. <laughs> but, and as far as I can find, there aren't any laws that restrict you from seeing what's going on. This is not a secured part of the airport as far as, it's not a sterile area, right? I mean, you have to be credentialed to physically be present there, but it's not like there's anything classified going on here. It's not like some of the TSA areas where you definitely can't video. Right, especially if you start putting like GPS and tracking in it, and then that actually could be beneficial for everybody because when the bag does get lost, you can find it. Precisely. <laughs> right. Right, but the bag hadn't been screened at that point. It hadn't gone through the TSA screening, so it wasn't a secured bag from TSA's perspective. Right. So. Yes. I'll, I'll repeat the question for you. I can hear you up here. Right. Exactly. Privacy plan, that would be illegal. As far as what if you tag your bag and says <laughs> Well, but that that essentially is a that's a public area that you're recording in. The the Right, I'm familiar with that. Right. It's a classified area, whatever. If the people don't know they're being recorded and have a reasonable expectation of privacy, and you record them without their knowledge, it's a federal felony. I mean, don't take my word for it. Look it up. I, I think that's a little bit of a. The, the question so, video put. Video by itself, right. you're fine, but the, audio, you're not. The, the question put forth is because I'm recording audio, do I run afoul of some of the federal recording statutes? And I'm going to pause this momentarily. I don't think that you do because I think that these areas fall under the, basically under the guise of a public area because we aren't going into an. There's no expectation of. There's no expectation of privacy is the, is the distinction. <laughs> Thank you, but I, I think the distinction is there's no expectation of privacy there. Um, it could be somewhat of a gray area. Again, I'm going to refer back to I'm not an attorney. You, you know, you should seek a legal opinion on this, but I don't think that it runs afoul of that law. So, exactly, exactly. So there, and as was just pointed out by our previous presenter, they're already being recorded with security cameras. So, right. Yeah, I, I understand that, and there could potentially be some issues there. I don't believe that there are in this particular instance, and that's something we can talk about later because I, I am curious about your, your viewpoint. Right. Right. No, I. Right. I. I agree. I agree, and I, I would be interested to talk to you about that a little bit more. Title eighteen, section twenty-five, twelve. Right. Yeah. 
So this is some footage where I actually get onto a plane, and there's some interesting footage because I want to get through some of this. So here we're actually sitting on the conveyor belt. This is going into an Airbus 320. <laughs> uh, I think that is just air that's spinning the turbine there. So, so let's, uh, okay, does anybody recognize this picture right here? If you've been to Shmukon, you should recognize it. That's, that's looking at the top of the metro. So this is a flight through Reagan National DCA. And you can see the train showing up. And then we walk on board. And so there, there's a, there we go. So that's in the airport itself. This is, the airline worker has picked it up. And they're getting ready to throw it. Well, they just threw it off the side. From here, it's going to go into one of the x-ray machines as soon as it's picked up again and tossed onto, there we go. So it's picked up and it's about ready to go through the x-ray. And this is where TSA basically does its screening at national on this bag. And now we're inside, bag's being x-rayed. And it's manually pulled off the other side, set aside. This has been on four flights, but there's been about eight legs, so. Probably not. So. And at this point, we're on, oh, I, I lost track right there, but. We're like behind the scenes at Reagan National. The bag's been screened. Um, I think we're one of the collection points because you just saw another bag slide back in the background there. So I think shortly we're going up on the conveyor. Yeah, so we're going around the conveyor belt here. And I think we're going to hit one of the collection points, which means in a few seconds we should end up on one of the baggage carts and head out to the plane. So we're moving along. There we go. So we just got loaded onto one of the carts. And coming up in a little bit here is where we get a little bit of interesting handling. This particular flight was going from Reagan National to, I believe, JFK, JFK to Indy. Right, these are luggage handles. I have a little bit of footage coming up. They'll show you the TSA people at Indy. So here we are. You guys have seen enough of bags going through conveyors. So this is, if you had the footage, right? But if your luggage gets lost, you lost the footage. Um, and there's some problems if you try to do something Wi-Fi, because how do you shut this down at the appropriate moment? Because you don't want to be broadcasting Wi-Fi when you're on the plane. Really. So here we are, we're getting loaded into the plane. I think this is an Airbus, this is an Airbus 319, which is kind of funny because that's going from DC to New York. The 319 is a long haul version of the 320. It's where I fly up to, on, when I go up to Anchorage. And the US Airways shuttle that runs up and down the East Coast is a 319s. She is. So now we're in the, the baggage area, or the uh, cargo hold, rather, of the plane. And, and I think at this point we're going to get, we've landed. I think this is in New York, and we're getting offloaded. I think we're looking out of the cargo hold of the plane right now. Because those are the wheels of a jetway sitting back there. I guess we've already been pulled off. We're sitting on the ground. Picked up. So, which one? Where did I get turned here? I was looking for some of the, the interesting. There we go. Okay. 
So this section coming up here, I'm going to back that up just a little bit. This is going to be getting loaded onto the flight from JFK going back to Indianapolis. And at this point, we're in the baggage cart. That's the little curtain that you're seeing, like some light shining through. That's the side of another bag right there. That's my automated editing software writing the image for us. And shortly, you'll get to see what I call the turbo conveyor belt for baggage handling. It's, it's even better than that. They got tired of the conveyor that, that goes into the plane. It was a little too slow for them. So, yeah. So. Okay, so here's the bag. We're inside the cargo hold. This is another Airbus, I believe. So. I guess that was coming out of the plane because now we're going into the connecting flight. So now we're in the cargo hold of the connecting flight. And this is one of those situations where it finally worked out and we're looking perfectly situated, and it gets even better because the handler moves the bag for me. Thank you. So we're kind of looking into the cargo hold. Now we're looking out so we can see the bags getting loaded. So what you're seeing... Yep. Yep. And he's basically having a conversation about how many more bags we need to get this loaded. And remember, this is New York, so it's a little bit animated as well. So, so that made it kind of a nice one to actually capture. I think right here is where he says, screw it, and jumps down. And then you'll see the baggage loading process speed up dramatically. So, yep. The hell with this. I'm getting out. But, oh, aren't there more bags to be loaded? Should see it here in a second. Okay, maybe taking a couple of minutes longer than I thought. There we go. Yeah. Not sure you caught the speed on that. So let's. Yeah. There we go. I think it's like the next couple of things coming up. Boom. Yeah. That isn't the belt <laughs> pulling it up there, right? So. Let's see, I think that one needs to go back up there somewhere. <laughs> Let's see, I think there's another spot up there. Yep, there we go. <laughs> and at this point, it's pretty much loaded. So. There's a couple more bags get thrown on. You can see them close up. There's a, a drape that they put over the cargo hold door. You can see them latching right now so that when you're in flight, the bags don't fall against it. So when they open the door up, the bags don't fall out on them. So he like latches that up. And we're, we're basically done there. And uh, let's see. So that's on the ground at Indy. 
to the other side of that flight. We're looking out, cargo hold, it's on the conveyor belt upside down. So, just write the conveyor belt down. And, uh, there's not really anything else interesting on that part of the flight. It gets on some conveyor belts, it winds its way through, I pick up the bag. Um, you can see the baggage carts driving by. The other part of interesting footage is, let's see if I can find it real fast here. And we'll actually see the TSA screening area. There we go. This is at Indianapolis on a flight going to Chicago. That's after the bag got handled. I believe that is a TSA worker working hard away screening bags. And the, these white boxes that are really like burning the video there are the x-ray machines that the bags go through. And there's a little bit better shot coming up in about 10 seconds or so when you get a little bit further down the line looking back at them. Yeah, we, we had an interesting question. Where are they spending all the money on? I believe the TSA budget for fiscal year 08 is $6.4 billion. Billion. They're spending all their money on screening machines, extra machines like this. I did see an article about a week or so ago. They're finally going to start using dogs for screening bags, which is what they should have been doing all along, right? They're cheap. They're highly effective. There's a very, very low rate of false positives. And again, they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're highly effective, they're easy to maintain and take care of. I have not caught that yet. About 15 to 20 hours. Yeah. So enough that I would have thought I should have seen some inspection, right? Probably. No. This is, again, the TSA screening area here. And if you look at what well, went through a little bit faster there, but this round circle here, this is a large box, and there's a ramp that goes up. They x-ray it. There's a ramp that comes off of it. And there's, like, just a bank of those things. That's where all the money's going is for those machines right there. Well, it's just... Most of them are GE, yeah. And that, again, is just more footage of the area out there. The, you know, the machines are good. They do what they're advertised to do. They're outrageously expensive. They're horribly inefficient. I mean, you saw you know, how quickly the bags are going through, or more appropriately, I guess, how slowly the bags are going through. And just lay the luggage out, run some dogs up and down, and you're done as far as bombs, drugs you know, large amounts of cash, because cash has drugs in it, so if you try to carry large amounts of cash, drug dogs will trigger on it. I, I, I was resisting that, that comment. So that's basically the footage that I've got. So that, like I said, there's, there's nothing damning here yet. But eventually there will be. And... Because they could open the bag up. Four flights, eight segments. That's not a, a good sample. Right. So are you going to... Uh, so it's actually, I was thinking about that. It's probably double that. It's probably more like eight and 16, but still, relative to the tens of thousands of flights a day. Yeah. Eventually, you're going to get one of these guys. That means your bag has been opened, and they admit they opened it. Yes, thank you. Or you lost it. Well, yeah, I'm getting some recommendations on if I want them to pull my bag aside. There's lots of ways to get their attention. One way flight. Right. Yeah. Well, one of these flights was booked that day, two hours before it left. I thought that would get it. It didn't. I didn't pay cash. I'll pay cash next time. It got me random. It got me random screened. Right? They wrote the S's on my ticket. I think it was only three. So maybe I could have gotten out of that. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, there's lots of ways we get their attention. I was really trying to be low profile on the first few flights, 
because I didn't want to get flagged immediately, have the bag seized, and not have anything to show for it. So I was kind of curious what was going on, and it, it's even more boring than I thought. <laughs> that, that's, that's the answer. I was expecting to see something, and I really didn't. Yes, question in the back there, please. Were your bags ever PPBM, positive, ba or positive passenger bag matched? Were my bags put through the positive yeah. uh, passenger matching? I can't remember the exact name, but basically, your bag can't be on a plane if you are on the plane. That used to only apply to international flights. That applies to all flights now. And I couldn't see where they were doing that. The only place that I could see they might be doing that was when they're actually loading the bags on the plane. But I don't think that's a TSA function. I think that's an airline function is who's actually handling that based on what I've observed. Because when they actually load the bags, a lot of times they scan the barcode as they're putting on that conveyor belt. that when I get asked for additional screening, right. that they'll tag my bag for PPBM. If I don't get asked, my pa my, it'll act, they'll actually that, print That's out interesting. PPBM. Um, for those of you that didn't hear that, what he said was he takes a, a short haul flight a lot, and when he gets pulled aside or tagged initially at check-in for the additional screening, they tag his bag for positive bag matching, PBM. And I was under the impression that was supposed to be done for all bags now, but maybe that's not the no, case. PPBM is mandatory for all international flights, but it's right. not mandatory for um, local or national flights. D domestic flights. It's yeah, been domestic. required for international flights for quite a while. Um, and it was required for domestic flights during certain periods of time and certain security le levels. And I thought that that remained in effect, but maybe it has not. I, I'm not certain about that. And I'm running over a little bit. I had a little bit of a late start, so I don't know if the next presenter is ready to get up here or not, or if I can continue to take questions. Okay. I haven't taken any questions from over here. There's a light over there. So if I missed anybody over here, last, last chance. That's the TSA. Oh, uh, we, <laughs> we have a question in the back there. In all, yes, the times, in all the times you've um, put your camera in your bag, right. has it ever been knocked around so hard that it's actually became dismounted from the bag? Yes, or very, good question. So again, the question was, has my bag been knocked around so hard that it was knocked out of its mount? I, again, this thing fits in this like clamshell thing in there. Now, when I put it in there, I take packing tape and I wrap around it. It turns out it wasn't the airlines, though. It was turbulence. It was one of the most, most turbulent flights I've been on. Um, it was one of those flights they wouldn't even let the flight attendants up. Um, it, it was it was pretty rough. So, and uh, I got my bag and I'm like, looked at my little hole there for the camera. Like my camera's not there. That was one of the first flights that went on. So I got some footage of it getting loaded in. I was like, ah. So that's why there wasn't really any footage going into DC, but there was footage leaving DC. And I think we're out of time. Or if I mean, if not, I'll continue to take questions. Are there any other questions then? You're going to continue with the experiment? I, I'm going to continue to maintain secure oversight over my bag. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like exactly. An awareness as to my bag. Um, I'll be around, so if anybody has any questions, please stop by. If you have any thoughts, um, some of the things I'd like to do would be track this thing live as it's going through, and get the video via Wi Fi. There's some complications as far as I have to turn that off. Um, when it's on the plane, because I don't want to be broadcasting that, because that definitely runs afoul of several things and might actually be a legitimate safety issue, even though it's doubt doubtful. But um, another thing is uh, some of the shock stuff that people mention. Um, I'm interested in doing that. Uh, I think the uh, shock stickers, you'll see them on Mythbusters a lot of times they use them. They're cheap, they're simple, they're reliable. It's one of those things, it just can't screw up. So I'll probably go down that path. Um, but if anybody has any other ideas or questions, I'd love to talk to you about it. So thanks, guys.